do those models incorporate, say, policy change? Some people in my group are working on trying to do this, and I don't know what it, way it will go, if it will make it more uncertain or less uncertain. Hello, um, I'm Hannah. What's your name? I'm Tallulah. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. What's your field of research? I'm a physicist. I study atmospheric physics, so the physics of the atmosphere, um, and trying to understand uh, the equations which govern that atmosphere, and that's basically how we make a weather forecast or indeed a climate prediction. Is it mainly in the sort of forwards-looking sense of models and predictions? Yes, that's right. Yes, so my um, I got into the area originally from an interest in, in just explaining the world around us, and so I was interested in understanding how clouds form and how weather systems move and so on. And so um, this, this translated then into understanding how we can encode them into a computer model to make a weather forecast, so very much present focused. But when I started my research career, I was then embedded in, in an environment where many people are studying how the weather patterns change into the future, so studying climate change. And the models that we develop for weather forecasting are basically the same models that we then put into the middle of a climate model. So you have to have extra stuff around the edge, you have to represent ice sheets and um, uh, how the land surface will change, how plants will change to changing temperatures. You have all this extra complexity, but at the heart of it is the same atmospheric simulator that you would use to make a weather forecast. How long have you had a focus more towards the climate side of things? So I've maintained a focus on both timescales, and I okay. think this is quite um, uh, this is quite useful because it's very hard to validate or check a climate prediction, but you can always check a weather forecast because you only have to wait a day or two to see how it pans out. Trying to maintain this um, this focus on all timescales, really, from weather through seasonal forecasts, where we predict maybe a few months ahead, but then ultimately onto decadal and climate prediction. It's a way of then um, stitching together all the things that we know about the atmosphere so that we can improve all forecasts on the timescales, really. How are these um, models used? They are the heart of the predictions that we would make, the projections that we make, which inform things like the IPCC reports, uh, which help us understand what future climate's going to do. But also it's how we, we perform experiments. Um, so we can experiment on the atmosphere by uh, making a change in our model. So let's say we, uh, we have a hypothesis that some particular weather pattern is related to the ocean temperatures in a particular location. You can go into your computer simulator and you can put a big warm patch or a cold patch on the ocean and see how, um, how the atmosphere responds. So it's a way of performing experiments and actually building up an understanding about, about the world as well. Do those models incorporate, say, policy change? There are almost two different categories of models that we have. And so the models which I have historically worked on are what we would call an earth system model. So where we encode all of the physical processes that are going on, um, the, the oceans, the atmosphere, the sea ice and cryosphere and, and plants and so on. But we don't have people in our model. And then we have a different kind of model called an integrated assessment model. And that has a much, much simpler version of this physical climate system, but we have an economy and we have agriculture and feedbacks from humans onto the climate and back onto what we do in return. And so we have these two different models at our disposal, but I think it's really important actually that we try and stitch this together. Um, and so some, uh, some people in my group are working on trying to do this, so trying to work out how we can emulate the behaviour of one of these complex models and put it into an impacts model. And I think this would at least help us to try and get at that question of how much, um, uh, you know, how much this enhanced understanding of what the physical climate system is doing will change our projections mm -hmm. for how people interact with it. And I don't know what it, way it will go, if it will make it more uncertain or less uncertain. When you formulate these models within um, your own research, how does that give you a sense of optimism or pessimism about our prospects? There are lots of different sources of uncertainty, but the hardest one to quantify is in what we do. Um, we would run our model several times with different emission pathways. You know, are we, are we pessimistic or are we optimistic? And I don't know where we're going to fall on this spectrum. I think this, this idea that the natural world has intrinsic value chimes a lot with me. And so there's merit in 
uh, working out what we should do to preserve it beyond uh, anything that it can do for us. I think that's fascinating as well because the same problem underlies that response that underlies the problem. Like it was this, this sort of instrument, instrumentalization of the world that has brought us here because we sort of saw it as something at our disposal. And yeah, it is fascinating how much of the climate change discourse is focused around, oh, we won't be able to live, inhabit this environment. We will have to change this. We will have to do that. Future generations of people will suffer without sort of paying proper regard to the planet itself, yes. which is suffering. Yeah. How yeah. do you think that, do you think that's something that is adequately represented within a more scientific discussion of? I think there's a lot of other disciplines which would be looking at things like biodiversity, which maybe is a, a way of looking at nature for nature's sake, um, uh, as opposed to maybe the more um, kind of policy and human impacts orientated work, which is a little bit more than focused on what, how this will affect us. Um, and I don't know, maybe different questions motivate different people and that perhaps we talk a lot about impacts on humans because we, we think that that will motivate people to do something more about the climate crisis. Or well, I think that we should hold both of these ideas in our, in our head. Well, that's great to hear from an expert as well, from someone who knows these models. Thank you very much.